Hello, and thank you for joining us today in another uh, episode of A Line in the Sand. And we are here talking about revival and what God's doing around the world. He's pouring out his spirit. We're in a, in a great season. We are in the season of jubilee, the jubilee of all jubilees, and we're getting ready for Pentecost. You may have thought that Pentecost was last Sunday, but according to the Hebrew lunar calendar is coming up on June 12th, and we are getting very close to that time. And we are in a time of promise. We are in a, t in a season when, when God is doing something great around the world. He's gathering the harvest. He's, he's bringing souls to, into salvation. He's healing. He's delivering. He's sh sh uh, pouring out extraordinary miracles. And I'm here with two of my host today, uh, Pastor Ramon Arroyo. Say hello, Pastor hello, Ramon. Yes, everybody. And, uh, and also my friend and co-host, uh, also uh, Manuel Johnson. And uh, we're just going to talk about revival. And, uh, you know, there's a, a couple of hot spots around, around the world, and one happens to be in Brawley, California. That's actually the place where I live right now. And Pastor Ramon is the pastor of that church. It's it's a it's a Brawley Supernatural Foursquare Church, and what a great name, Supernatural! You know, nothing that God does is natural. He's a supernatural God, and we have to we. If you think of God as natural and just out there, you are totally missing who God is, because God is totally supernatural. He is beyond and above anything we could ask or think or imagine. He is not in your box. He, if, if he is in your box, you've got God locked up because mm. God is the out-of-the-box God. He is awesome. And he sent his son Jesus to make a way so that we could enter into his glorious presence. And so let's talk about that a little bit, uh, Pastor Ramon. Tell us what's happening at the Brawley Supernatural Foursquare Church. Thank you, thank you, Pastor David. Greetings, everybody that's watching us right now on this Line in the Sand program. Um, in the city of Brawley, we are experiencing a powerful move of God. His presence, His glory is tangible. Healings are taking place. There's a, there's a manifestation called Miracle Money that's also taking place. And all this is happening right now in a city of 23,000 people and, and, and in a community called Imperial Valley. Since January, Pastor David, as you know, prophets have been coming into the city of Brawley. Prophet after prophet, international prophets have been coming. In the month of March, we had a gathering of 22 prophets called the School of the Prophets. We had three-day meetings, and they were powerful, powerful they came to announce a revival that's going to break out of that area that we are at the, at the border of Mexico on the southern part of California. And God has told us that revival is going to break out along the border and it's going to cover the entire state of California, the, the nation, the United States of America, and it will go to the nations of the world. And so we're excited about that, and, and uh, we, uh, I was giving a report right now that, that prophets still are coming to our church, and, and uh, we had a prophet show up yesterday just on a visit. He wasn't there for a meeting. He wasn't there for a service, but uh, he told me as soon as he walked into the sanctuary, into the church, mm. the presence of God mm. met him at the very door the presence of God, and, he's, and he told me, I'm in the right place, God is in this place, and, and it dawned on me for the first time that God is in our building, he's in our church, mm. he's in our ministry, we know that he's there when we have services, when he manifests himself, but now I've realized that he's there 24-7, he lives there, and, yeah. and, and total strain, when total strangers can come up to you and say, you know what, God is here, They've never been here before, and, and that's just the, 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 the proof that God is there, and, and he's there right now. While I'm here at the, the TV station, the presence of God is in our building. It's in that, you know, we weren't always known as the supernatural church. We were an a, a ordinary church, 
Uh, but four years ago, God poured out supernatural anointing, supernatural manifestation and demonstration of his power, and he changed our name to the supernatural church. We didn't change our name because we thought it was a good name or a good title. No, God told me one day, this church now, you're going to call it the supernatural church because my power will manifest here, will demonstrate here. So he began to heal the sick. He began to do miracles. He began to give us miracle money. And I just want to just confirm uh, what Brother uh, Pastor David just said. This is the season of Jubilee right now. I want to tell you that on the June 12th, God is going to open the windows of heaven over your life, over your life. If, we, if you will just believe it and if you will just follow his instructions that are biblical and bring your first fruit offering, the heavens will open over your head. And God, according to Malachi, more than enough blessing is going to be poured out upon your life. And, 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 and what's also very special or, or very good is that because it's Jubilee, you're going to get a double portion. Not only are you going to get what Malachi said, you're going to get double because it's the year of Jubilee. And, and I'm just excited about it. I want to release that word into your life. I want you to get ready. I want you to anticipate the blessing of God. Believe with your heart. Declare it with your mouth. And obey the instructions of God. That's what I, I wanted to share with them. And Manuel. Pastor Manuel. Yes. What a, what a name for a church. Mega praise. Many. Yes. yes, hallelujah. That, that was, uh, I was a name the Lord gave me many years ago, and uh, Mega Praise Ministries, and we have known for that um, our, our worship and our praise, and we get, just like uh, Pastor Romine was saying, what goes on in his ministry, we get the same thing praise in our ministry God. regarding the, the, the worship, regarding yeah. the praise. Yeah. And we, the, people have said, that my God, you know, would it, you know, as well as the mantle that God has given. Mm -hmm. But you know, I'm gonna tell you something. You know, the Lord is doing something with all of his churches. Mm -hmm. When I say in churches, all of his churches, mm -hmm. he's doing something. Yes, he's he is. doing something moving and it's not leaving. Mm -hmm. And I Praise like that. God. It's Praise not God. leaving. <laughs> We're tired of the, you know, here today, gone tomorrow. Yeah. And that's what we've been experiencing that's these exactly. last decades. Yes. Here today, gone tomorrow. But it's not happening. It's, just a, it's a shift. It's a change. It's, a con it's not just a, a pouring. It's a continually pouring in because you can't stop the flow of the Holy Spirit unless you quench it yourself by not keeping his word. Yes. And Pastor Romine, Apostle David, I want to tell you, as Pastor Romine was talking about the glory, yes. about the presence, you know, and we see that in Exodus, the Bible, where Moses is on a mountain. He experienced it on the mountain, but God wanted them to experience it in the camp. Right. You know, he, you know, so, and, and he asked, Lord, show me your glory. Mm -hmm. And, the, and the, right after that, the Lord says, I heard what you said, and, and he responds to the glory. And most people are looking for the presence, and that's, that's a small part. Mm -hmm. That's a small part. But the glory is what the goodness. He says, my goodness would pass. And his, when his goodness had passed, he was proclaiming the name of the Lord. And you're seeing that. You know, you're seeing all the names of the Lord manifest itself. Supernatural. All these things are taking place. You know, I've been to Brawley a few times. Uh, no, actually more than a few times. And we've all, each time we've been blessed, we've left with something. We've, out, we've given, but we've left with something. So I encourage you to to continue to go out there, visit it, get on the website. Is, you know, the Church of the Supernatural, get on the web, go there, experience it for yourself. Take that anointing back to your church. You know? The, and, and closing on this statement, Bible tells us in John, he says, you know, because he says, Pastor Owen says, a stranger, a prophet, walked in our, walked in our church, and boom, he says, whoa presence of God is here. Mm -hmm. You know, how do you keep the presence of the Lord? By keeping his word, by loving him. Mm -hmm. John tells us in John 14, he says, if those that love me, they'll keep my word. And he says, and me and my father will make a home in their place. Yeah. And that's exactly what that's has happened. Good. God has made a home there. You know, you invited him. You, yes, he has made a home there. Then John says that, yeah. the book of John. Yeah. He says, if you know, so, you're, so you're, it's not just like, oh, we got the presence of God. No, 
you're walking in his word. Your ministry is walking in his word. So God says, he says, I promise me and my father will come and we will make our home where your home is. Glory to God. (laughs) Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, you know that that when uh, Moses brought the people to Sinai, Uh he was preparing them. He was. For... Do you know what the feast was he was preparing them for? Tell us. Pentecost. Ooh. Pentecost. That's, that's and there's true. a story behind that. And uh, it's a story of the Omer and how they would, uh, how they would prepare themselves mm-hmm. to receive the blessing. There was an expectancy. God yes. actually gave them a gauge. And uh, Pastor, would you like to explain that to sure. us a little bit about how... What God did at that time? The Bible says in Leviticus 23, verses 15 and 16, when God said to Moses, I want you to count seven weeks from the, from the first fruit of Passover to seven weeks is the first fruit of Pentecost. Mm. Or the total of those 49 days, the last day would be the 50th day. Mm. And... Uh, and and that's what is known as counting the omer. The omer is the first fruit. It is the, the measuring instrument or a, a measurement, a Hebrew measurement that was used uh, to, to, uh, to bring the first fruit. Uh, they brought the barley on Passover and they was to bring the wheat first fruit on Pentecost. And so those 49 days they would count was a time of spiritual preparation. Spiritual preparation, and it, it would, it would uh, activate in them a, an, a, an anticipation. So, so today's 33 days um, uh, of the counting of the Omer, with five, uh, four weeks and five more days to the Omer. And so the people of Israel were instructed to count one day, every day, and they would prepare themselves for that blessing, mm. to bring the first fruit. Mm. And, and uh, another reason why they would count the Omer is so that uh, God didn't ever want them to forget that from Egypt to Mount Sinai was 49 days. Wow. And, and that's the, along the, 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 the journey took, 49 days. And then the 50th day was Pentecost. Um, so, and, and, and what the Lord said to them, I never want you to forget that you were slaves in Egypt. See, and God still doesn't want us to forget that. You know, he, he wants us to remember where he took us out of. And he wants us to, to be prepared always for the blessing that he has for us. So, so th- uh, those are the reasons why uh, the people of Israel would count the Omer. Now, what does that have to do with us today? Everything, everything, everything. For because God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Mm-hmm. It's the, the, the Lord is still the same. And, and what it is, for them, it was a physical trip uh, or journey. For us, it's a spiritual journey. Correct. It's a spiritual journey. And it is also known as the journey to prosperity. Mm. The journey to prosperity. And so the Lord promised to, to open the windows of heaven as we bring that first fruit offering on Pentecost on the 50th day and pour out more than enough blessing. Let me just tell you really quick what, what, Jesus, what Jesus did when he came to earth. Jesus came to earth. He died. He rose from the dead to give us two kinds of life. Two kinds of life. The first life is called eternal life. John three sixteen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believeth in him may not perish but have everlasting life. That's eternal life. You see, that's the, and that's the most important thing that Jesus came to do, to give us eternal life. But then he also said, I came to give you another type of life. The, the, the Bible said, I've come to give you life, John 10.10, 10, and give you life more abundantly. So there's eternal life, and then there's abundant life. Salvation is eternal life. When we receive Jesus as our Savior, when we uh, believe in his sacrifice, we receive eternal life, which means salvation, everlasting life. It means our names are written down in the Lamb's book of life. It means that we're going to make our home in heaven one day when we leave this earth. 
But abundant life is totally different. Abundant life means prosperity. It, that's, that's financial Abundant. breakthrough. Yes, it also means victory. It also means uh, uh, healing. It also means uh, joy, faith, love. A a everything that God has promised us in abundance here on earth. You see, God doesn't want us to live uh, a defeated Christian life. He wants us to live a victorious Christian. That's in the abundant life. God doesn't want us to be poor. God doesn't want us to be sick. He, God doesn't want us to be defeated. He wants us to be victorious, healthy, prosperous, and blessed. And Jesus is coming for that kind of a church, a victorious church. Yes, sir. Pastor Williams, as you were speaking, yes. I know there, there is people out there right now that are, are asking the question, well, you know, I have studied this, and I've, and I've done this, and, and, and we, we do this every year, uh, my, my church, and I have not experienced it. What's going on with that? Well, uh, I don't know personally what's going on with that individual, but I can tell you from my experience, you ha number one, you have to believe. Amen. Believe the word. <coughs> See, the Bible says in Leviticus 23, these are my appointed times. They're not the Jewish appointed times. This is not a Jewish thing. This is a God thing. Amen. Passover, three times a year, Passover, Pentecost, Feast of Tabernacles. We are to present ourselves to the Lord. So the first thing you have to do is to believe the word of God. You have to believe the word. You may not, I don't understand everything. And when I first started, I didn't understand very much. But I believed the word. I took the instruction of God and I began to apply it. So you believe the word. You step out on the word and trust God. Trust God for the manifestation and the demonstration. God that, will come that, through. That, that's a good answer. Mm -hmm. And that's a good, great answer. Mm -hmm. There are also people that say, well, you know what? I'm not Jewish. I'm not Gentile. I am Gentile. Mm -hmm. Now, Luke was a what? He was a Gentile. He was a Gentile, yes. and he was right there at the table yes, sir. when Jesus broke the bread yes, sir. and said for them to honor him. Yes, sir. He was a Gentile at the table. Mm -hmm. So it's not just a Jewish thing, it's a Gentile thing. You know, expand on that. Yeah, yes. And, and it's not, it's not a, a, a Jewish thing. It's a God thing. Amen. And every Gentile, the Bible is clear. It says when we receive Jesus as our personal Savior, we, we're engrafted in into grafted. the olive That's tree. Right. We, we, we become, when, through Christ, we become spiritual sons of Abraham. Through Christ, we are connected into the covenants of God, the promises of God. Everything that God promised Israel now belongs to us as well, through Christ. As, as the scripture says, one new man. Yes, Jewish. one new man. Yes. And, it's, and God's not trying to make us Jews. He's not trying to make, uh, 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 I'm obviously Hispanic. You're, right. you're obviously uh, black uh, American. Yes, black American. But, but, but we're, not, we're not supposed to be Jews, but at the same time, we are spiritual Jews. Amen. Through Christ Jesus. Through Christ Jesus. And we have a right to all the blessings in the covenants that God made with Abraham. And that's all what this is about. You see, I've been a Christian for 41 years. 37 of those years, I, I, I served the Lord. I, I, I obeyed as best as I could, but I was always poor. Mm. I was always defeated. I was always broke. And it wasn't until God opened my eyes. Because, see, God opens your eyes to these truths. These are supernatural revelations in the word of God. And when God opened our eyes and we believed and began to act on him, the manifestation, the demonstration of his power was released upon our life. It was poured out from the open windows of heaven. And what God did for me, he'll do for you. He'll do for Pastor Manny, he'll pa Pastor Day. He's already doing it for these men. But what I'm trying to say to you is that God will do it for you. If you will just believe and obey the word of God, God has promised more than enough blessing for you. And I know there's people out there uh, that, that, that have a hard time with the finance uh, message of finance, of prosperity. But listen to me. Everybody needs prosperity. Everybody needs That's right. Every everybody That's right. needs it, and if you're a Christian out there, you need it. And and I, and and for years, I knew that God wanted me to prosper, but I didn't know how I, to get the prosperity. I did not know how. But now we've we've discovered it through the Jewish roots teachings. We've discovered how to receive the prosperity in our life, and that's what God is doing. And uh, you know, I may add to that that it's all the blessings of Abraham. Yes, sir. And sometimes we, we think the law, the law, the law, 
But Abraham came before the, the law. law. Yes, he did. Number one. Number two, he did not receive his righteousness from the law. It said he was justified by faith. Faith. That all the blessings of God may come, uh, the blessings that came to Abraham might come on the Gentiles. Might yes, come sir. On the Gentiles. Abraham did not live, he was just like Jesus, uh, like a form of Jesus, mm -hmm. but, but Jesus received the curse on our behalf, but Abraham lived in the fullness of the blessing. None of the curse hung on to him. We have to understand that, number mm -hmm. one. Yes. Number two, we need to understand that, that all the blessings of Abraham. When I read the story of Abraham, I see how many times he failed in his life, mm -hmm. and yet every time, even in failure, he received blessing. Mm -hmm. That to me is incredible because that tells me that our God is not de doesn't uh, do doesn't look on us dependent on our works. Mm -hmm. He looks at our heart and in in how we serve and we're <clears throat> obedient to Him. He is looking at us, and Jesus removed every part of the curse from us so that we could have the fullness of salvation. Now, sometimes we need to understand how these components come together. God has principles in life that bring us to the fullness of his promise. I'm astounded that in the fullness of age, God promised 120 years to men, but Abraham lived 187 years. He lived be beyond the fullness and into the glory. And in the, in the last parts of his life, if you read Genesis chapter 25, verse 1, it says when Abraham was very old and strict in, in age. It is astounding to me that in the next chapter, he marries Tanera, and, I, and he took a hold of the blessing and the promise that had come to him to regenerate, that literally regenerated his body to produce more children. He lived in Daddy the fullness mm -hmm. of his children. Yes. He had six more kids from Tanera. Yes. I guarantee you that Tanera probably would not have married a, a wrinkled old man. Something happened in his body. He re took hold of the covenant promise that God had for him. And sometimes we think that, the, that God loves our sickness and our disease. He loves our cancer. My brothers and sisters, that's a bunch of baloney. Mm -hmm. God cries and he weeps over cancer and yes. disease. He hates it. And you should hate it too. Yes. We should hate that. We should hate our poverty. Mm -hmm. We should hate it. Yes. When poverty comes knocking at our door, yes. it belongs to one person and that person alone. And, and you don't need to take it for that person because that person's named the devil. That's right. Send the devil <clears throat> packing. God made him homeless and it's up to you to keep him homeless. Yes. And so let, we're going to pray right now. That's we're right. asking the Lord Jesus just to come in and do the things that we can't do. So would you just pray yes. with us right now? Yes. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, we come to you, we come come to you. and we thank you for what you did. And we thank you for what you did. And we thank you that you bring us into the presence of your Father. We thank you that you bring, bring us into, into the fullness of your blessing. Bring us fullness of your blessing. Even if we don't understand it, even if we don't, we will believe it. We will believe it. We will be obedient to it. We will take hold of it in faith, and we will do what, whatever. The requirements are to receive your blessing. We yes, thank we you will. for it in Jesus' yes, name. Amen. Yes, Join us again next week. Bless yes, you. Yes, we will. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you.